I'm Sarah. Welcome to my podcast where I chat about crochet, knitting, sewing and the books I've been reading. How are you all? Hope you're all okay. Hope you've been, been enjoying your crafting time. Um, it feels like not very long ago since I last did a podcast, but I'm just trying to think about the rescheduling of how I um, do my videos. Um, so, and I had a few things to share. So let's get on with the chat. Let's first of all talk about what I'm wearing. Um, and by the way, I've recently had a week off work, so I've been really productive. So I think that's why I felt the need to podcast today as well. Um, so during this week, I've made this lovely sagebrush top by Friday Pattern Company. I've made it out of two different fabrics, as you can see. Um, I've got a bit of this lovely um, blue stripy linen and some beautiful broidery anglaise. I'm over the moon. I love it. I posted it on my Instagram page and had so many lovely comments. So um, it's got elasticated sleeves. It's a really easy make. There's a video um, that the designer does so you can kind of sew along if you want to, but the instructions are really good in the pattern. I'll just stand up and show you. Excuse the train. Now on the pattern, they suggest quite a big hem, which I've done on previous ones. I've made two previous sage brushes and I love them both. Um, but this one, I decided to just um, do a small little hem and then it gives me the option of, I can either like, fold it up or you know, tuck it in if I wanted to. Um, oh, I just, I'm so happy with it, so happy. I'm just gonna turn around and show you the back. I hope you could see the tie and how I've kind of um, done a contrast with the stripes. I've done it sideways, contrast into here. I made the bias binding. It's just, um, it feels perfect to me. It just, nothing went wrong. It all, it all just feels like it fits lovely, fits lovely here on the shoulders. Yeah, I'm just really, really happy with it. And it's perfect um, material for this really hot weather we're having. It doesn't look hot because it's quite gray out there, but it has been very humid. You have to have the fans on all the time. Um, and yeah, this just feels really lovely. So that's my first one. And funnily enough, how I made the this sagebrush, and I've got another one, I just did them kind of in, tandem, is that how I want to word it? I want to say batch sewing, but I just did each bit at the same time for two of them. So I ended up with two tops at the end. So the second one is just pure broidery anglaise. And again, I'm super happy with it. The only difference is the sleeves I cut. So you've got this beautiful broid uh, embroidered edge and I've just kept them loose and floaty. And I don't know what, what I prefer. Potentially, I could turn this up and put elastic in it as well, but I'm going to keep it like this for a little while. It, it just feels lovely. The, the pattern, even though um, yeah, it is a bit see-through, isn't it, with those holes, but it's fine with a, with a, a bra, you know, underneath. Just so you can see the back and the bias binding tie and just a little a little turned up hem so two sage brushes a little bit different um, and perfect for this summer weather if anyone's not made the sage brush I'd highly recommend it is it's lovely I love it so really really happy with this um, and then I've got one more finished um project that I've, I've talked about last time but now it's completely finished and it's my third felix cardigan it's lovely i've added some contrast buttons these are just in my button stash so they're not exactly i don't even think they're all the same than pink ones quite similar but so some pink and some blue which i think really kind of 
uh, this section here that I did in a mixture of um, drops. Is it drops? Yeah, drops baby merino and the beautiful yarn. Yeah, I think it, it fits in lovely. Last time I was talking about it fitted me really well and I was worried about overstretching it with blocking and I had lots of comments about how to block, lots of video links to um, to see. And I, I know I've, I've blocked things before, so I kind of understand the principle, but that it really made sense. So thank you so much for suggesting that. I looked at Arn, Arnie and Carlos, but weirdly, when I was looking at their how to block garments, I then was reading in his comments and some people were kind of saying, no, don't do it like that, do it like this. And one of the comments suggested, so in the past when I've blocked, I'm saying blocking, but what I mean is after I've finished a garment, I tend to soak it and then lay it on a towel. Um, I don't pin it out or anything. I just sort of kind of lay it how I want, how I want it to be. But this time, um, one of the comments said, just use steam from the iron. Whereas Arnie and Carlos want you to put a wet tea towel and press it. But um, the steam has definitely made made it a difference. Everything is smooth and lying flat and the, the hem is lovely and flat. So I literally just laid it on the ironing board like that, just parts of it and used the iron fairly close with the steam. I just steamed it all over. Um, so yeah, I'm really happy. Oh, it's so pretty. I don't know if to put it on or not. Should I put it on? Now I've done all the buttons up. See, I was saying last time, I'd quite like to be able to wear it like a jumper. Um, just to remind you, anyone or people that haven't seen me before, the beautiful, colorful yarn is by Orchidean Luxury Yarns. It's ultra merino just 100% superwash merino in a DK weight. And then because I only had three skeins of that, I then held baby merino double, because it's like a fingering four ply weight, um, and use that. You can see where I've done more cream, kind of the cream and the pretty yarn um, all around the button bands. And then like you say, this lower half is alternating two rows of each. And I love it. So let's put it on. I'm just gonna tuck this top up because it um, it's shorter than the top. I, I made this specifically to wear with jeans. So I made it a little bit longer than the other cardigans I've made that I tend to wear over a dress. Oh, it's so soft. I'm just gonna do it up because I, I, I haven't actually tried it on since I um, steamed it. But what I love about this Felix is it's the fit. I mean, the neck, it's just so perfect. And that's literally the raglan lace bit is literally on my arms. Now it might be, look a bit funny because I've got this you know, blousy thing underneath it, but let me just show you. So what I wanted is for it to be lower than my waist. I probably would have wanted it to be a bit longer actually to cover my belly, but um, oh, I love it. It's so pretty. Yeah, what do you think of the buttons? I think other ones I've kind of done alternating, but I really like that kind of cuts off. I don't think I even did that on purpose. And the blue for that bottom. Oh, I love the rib. I think I might have done extra long sleeves, but like I say, I mean cuffs rather. I turn round. Oh, it's lovely. I'm really, really pleased with it. This pattern, what is it about this pattern? I just, it's perfect for me. I've had um, a few comments saying that they just can't get can't get the fit right or and the other thing I was going to say is that the pattern is for Aran weight yarn and I use DK weight yarn um, but I use the same needles I didn't do a um, I didn't do a swatch I think I've just been really lucky I think maybe just my tension whatever it is has matched 
and again I don't know that because I haven't me measured the the gauge at all but it seems to it seems to have worked out I think with lots of patterns on raglan you know you can you can adjust things as much as you want you could keep doing the raglans to you get the size that you want but I've, ju I've just followed the pattern I did size three um, yeah I did the third size and you use six millimeter needles a five millimeter for the cuffs and the, the button bands um, and followed it to the letter did it exactly as it suggested it's lovely really lovely and I wouldn't I wouldn't say no to making another Felix because it's each one I've made looks so different you know, the first one I made was, was blue and, and again I just used the yarns I had so it wasn't a perfect mix you know they were just um tried to match match yarns that would go together the second one was much it's much more lightweight um with kind of more I can't remember what the yarn was what yarn was the second one anyway each one I've made is has been very different and which is why I'm not put off by making a third. Oh yeah, my second one, the really kind of lightweight one, was made from Jameson's Ultra, and I held it double. So it's like a mix of lamb's wool and Shetland wool. Yeah, I love I love that one too. Yeah, so yeah, I might even cast on a fourth one. So look, we're only 11 minutes in, but I just wanted to share with you the things I've finished and also something that I'm working on still so I think I, I did show you this last time I started a second um, floozy cardigan by Libby Johnson truly myrtle and I've got to the point now where I've separated for the sleeve so I thought I'd show you this this is lovely it smells nice so oh look at that so that's all the mosaic colour work. Don't be put off by mosaic if you've not done it before. It's super easy. It's not like stranded. You're not holding two strands together. It is one strand at a time with slipping and knitting or purling. So this yarn is from Eldenwood Craft, as well as that. It's not very good contrast, but it's this kind of bluer version. And the dark blue is um, Cascade Heritage. I've now separated for the sleeves, done a few rows and I've only got a little bit of this turquoisey colour left so I've split it in two and that will, is what I'll be using for my sleeves because there's, there's only like I say a few rows and I wanted to make sure that my sleeves reflect the body of my cardigan. So I, I keep a log of what colour I'm doing for which stripe to match that when I do the sleeves. I think there's 10 grams of each. So that should be enough for a few rows. Oh, excuse me, I've got hiccups. And now I'm going to introduce that second Eldenwood Craft yarn and intersperse it with, I've got a tiny little bit of cascade left, but I've also got a whole skein. So I think my lower part of this cardigan will be stripes. I think that will be okay. And I tend to do two stripes so I can hold the yarns as I'm going up, then you don't have the weaving in. So two of each. They look nice together, don't they? Um, I do have a spare ball of yarn, if I, but I don't think I'm going to need that. And it doesn't really go as well, so I'm going to put that aside. And just to show you, it's Eldenwood Craft in her Lagoon and Shore Break colourways. Lovely Emma. It is such lovely yarn. Let me just tell you what it is. It's 75-25 merino nylon. If I just kind of put it on the side so you can see. So you start off with your neckband and do your colour work. 
There's some increasing rose. Oh, it's lovely. And again, this will be lovely with jeans, not with a dress, because it's, um, I haven't really got colors like this to go, but isn't it lovely? So again, this is my second um, floozy cardigan. And I also have the pattern for the floozy jumper. So I might make that as well. And it's like I say, it's a, it's a fingering weight, four ply cardigan. And you just can see like when that gets blocked, and, you know, stretches out a bit, looks nice, doesn't it? Okay. Lovely. So I'm really, really pleased with that. And I think when you get to that part where you separate for the sleeves, then it just feels like it's just knitting and purling back and forth. I love that kind of work. Lovely. So they're all my makes. Last time I did show you um, a sock I was making, but I've not touched that sock at all. So I won't show you that again. And I've only got a cowl on the go again which I've not touched for about a year so that will be something else um, I need to start working on. I am going on a little holiday in a couple of weeks where we will just be relaxing and I think that's probably what I'll take with me the socks and the cowl and then I can yeah make some progress on those. Lovely so that's all the makes and now I just want to talk about the books I've been reading as well. Um, I'm also going to say here that I have just filmed, um, I'm calling it Book Club with Yarn Mugs. And this was recommended by a viewer after my last podcast, because I get lots of lovely comments about the reviews of books that I do. And someone suggested, why don't you do a book club? And so I had a good old think about it and how I kind of wanted it to be. And so I'm now going to film a little video once a month um, about the books that I've been reading, so a bit of a book review, but also with a book club vibe, and I'm going to suggest a book that I want to read next, and then hopefully others will want to read it with me. And so then each month we can do the same. I'll review the book, other books I've read or listened to, and review the book that maybe other people might want to join me with. So yeah, if you fancy that, I think I'll be posting that this weekend. So the things, let me look, get my phone out because I've got my good reads up and I can tell you all the things I've read and listened to since last time. Let's have a look. Oh yeah. So the first book that I've read since last time was Strange Sally Diamond by Liz Nugent. I've never read any of her books before, um, but there's been lots of uh, comments made about this book. I loved it. I really loved it. It's really interesting. It's quite dark um, with kind of dark themes that some may, found, may, may find um, a bit traumatic. I'll just read you what I wrote for my review. I put a fantastic book I love the character of Sally, definitely some dark themes and the trauma experienced by some was described in detail. Was Sally neurodivergent or were her challenges due to the forgotten trauma? Some parts were quite funny, mainly down to Sally's blunt and honest conversations. An easy read which I sped through, but I was a bit dissatisfied with the ending, but overall a brilliant story which I would highly recommend. Yeah, isn't that funny? The endings can just, especially because I do star ratings, I star this as a four based on the ending. Yeah, if the ending had been a bit different, which I won't say. Um, but yeah, it's really interesting. I don't know if that's said enough to explain what the book's about. Um, yeah, I'll just read you this little sentence. Sally Diamond cannot understand why what she did was so strange. She was only doing what her father told her to do, to put him out with the rubbish when he died. That's the beginning bit. So yeah, it's interesting. Interesting to know where she's come from, what her background is, and how she interacts with people around her. I loved it. So that's the first one. 
the next book um, I listened to on Audible and I'm in a book club with work and the book was called The List of Suspicious Things by Jenny Godfrey. Oh, this book, it was lovely. It was a book about a child in Yorkshire during the time of the Yorkshire Ripper. And the child is 12 years old, she's called Miv. And, you know, the whole community are, are really worried about this man killing women and girls. And she wants to try and find out who he is. And so she does some investigating. And the story is about that, but it's also about her family. It's about what life was like at that time. There's some horrible racism in there. Um, but it was, it's really reflective of you know, what life was like. Um, yeah, it does cover lots of other themes as well, you know. Um, I've seen, I'll read you what I wrote for this, but the, but listening to it was, was wonderful. There was several um, narrators in there and their, their authentic Yorkshire accents were fantastic. I, I really loved it. I loved each, each narrator, but Miv is kind of the main character. I've, put, I've just finished listening to this amazing story. Absolutely love the narration and authentic Yorkshire accents. I was taken back to my childhood in the 70s. So much nostalgia from the songs mentioned to the rollable lip gloss. I mean, it, it just feels like, yeah, you just remember, you know, even when she's describing school, all sorts of things, yeah. The underlying horror of the Yorkshire Ripper, racism and domestic abuse was chilling. It was a real reflection of the time. The innocence of childhood friendships and budding romantic relationships was written so beautifully. So many topics were covered, including mental health issues. Loved every minute. It was a wonderful book. Five stars. And I'm, I messaged Jenny Godfrey on Instagram. I think that's her only book, her first book. Um, but I just needed to tell her that it was wonderful. And she replied, so... I think they're so lovely to do that. I've done that with a couple of books, you know, when you've really enjoyed them. Um, yeah, she's really, really amazing. So I'd really recommend that. The list of suspicious things. I don't know if everyone knows, but I do put all the links to everything I talk about in the description box. I suppose if you're watching on the telly, you might not be able to access that, I'm not sure. But on your phone or an iPad, if you're watching it, you can see all of those links and I'll do, I'll do links for all the books. And then the last book, which I finished yesterday, is this one. It's called Poor. Grit, Courage and the Life-Changing Value of Self-Belief by Katrona O'Sullivan. Now, when I saw this picture, this was quite nostalgic. I used to have hair like that, a bit like mullety hair. But isn't it funny how it's a bit short here, long there? It reminded me of an old school photo of myself. So this is a true story by Katrona and um, let me say what I wrote about that. Um, I'll just read you the back as well. It says, with, with love, oh no, we love a rags to riches story and we love to see someone triumph through sheer determination, but the story is rarely that simple. My story isn't anyway. It's extraordinary to think of how lucky I have been. So this is about a girl living in a home with siblings and parents who are drug and alcohol addicts. I've just put what an interesting, honest and inspiring account of Katrona's life from her challenging childhood living in poverty with her parents experiencing a lifetime of addictions, including a variety of adverse childhood experiences, to her passion for education. It was difficult reading at times and disappointing to read the reactions and lack of support from professionals who should have been supporting and safeguarding Katrona and her siblings. I really enjoyed the epilogue where Katrona reflected on her life with the knowledge and expertise she's had in her studies. Yeah, it was really good. I put four stars, um, but yeah, it's a true story. Um, and they're always really valuable, aren't they? Because that's written from the heart and it's her experience. But um, yeah, really, really good. 
Um, she's in Ireland at a time as well, so there's kind of you know living in Ireland and living in Birmingham. Um, you know, it talks about schools. I think that is what was interesting as well, just the different professionals that could have done something to help. So, yeah, it was hard reading in that way, but really, really inspiring, really uplifting as well. Um, so, yeah. So, three books since I last saw you. I'm listening and reading new ones now, but I think what I'm going to do then is not talk about books on this crochet knitting sewing channel and focus out on my little new book club video which I'll do once a month so it will they'll still be there but for those that aren't interested in books then you can just you know watch this um, but those that like the book reviews you can watch that other video too so it's the 2nd of August I think is that the day? yeah 2nd of August today so what I'm hoping is then the beginning of September I will be filming another podcast and a book club around the weekend so you get the Friday vlogs a podcast and a book club over over the course of a weekend so I hope that's nice having three videos on the trot um excuse the trains Lots of people ask me, you know, what the noise is. So yeah, I do live near a motorway. I do live near a train track. So, and a, a flight path as well. So you often get planes. So anyway, 26 minutes, that's not too bad. So yeah, I, I hope you've enjoyed it. I've really enjoyed the things I've been making. I'm so happy with two new tops and a new cardigan already, even though it looks quite spring-like, this will be lovely in the winter as well. Um, it's very thick. You can see it's really, really squidgy. But isn't it lovely? So take care of yourselves, everyone. Happy crafting and see you next month.